How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in today's video we're going to be covering a very interesting topic where using a certain setting within inside of your PC, whether it be an Intel or AMD based system, we can slightly limit the amount of CPU resources available to our system resulting in incredible performance improvements in nearly all games. The option in which we're going to be covering in this video is hyper threading and SMT or simultaneous multi-threading found on both Intel and AMD Ryzen CPUs. This setting should be able to be covered on all new systems and older systems dating back, so regardless of what sort of system System you have, you'll more than likely have this option available to you and we'll be covering whether or not it's worthwhile for you to test this out, see the performance improvements from it and potentially see fantastic performance improvements by the end of this video. For full context, I turn off this setting on both of my main PCs in which I use as I prefer to have the higher FPS, the more consistent performance and the lower input latency from using this. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, home or pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. So before we jump in and turn off SMT or hyperthreading on our system, it's first of all recommended to boot into one of your favorite games or run an application that you want to see some improvements on. Doesn't matter what CPU you're running, doesn't matter what game, just take a rough look at where your FPS currently is. That's what I'm getting at the stock settings. This is with SMT fully enabled on my system. Now before we jump in and disable hyperthreading or SMT on any system, there are a few systems I wouldn't recommend doing this for. To see how many cores your CPU has quickly and easily inside of Windows, Simply hit control, shift, and escape on your keyboard. At this point, go to the bottom left to hit more details, then go to the performance tab at the top, hit CPU. In the bottom right hand side, you'll see cores and logical processors. If there are twice the amount of logical processors as the amount of cores on your CPU, this will mean that you have either SMT or hyperthreading enabled. For my Ryzen 5900X, this has 12 cores and 24 threads. For my i5-12600K, this features a slightly different architecture, so we have 10 cores and 16 threads, but the same applies. There are more logical processors than there are cores, so this indicates that hyperthreading or SMT is enabled. As mentioned on this screen, if you're running on a 4-core CPU, or in some cases a 6-core, you're really pushing it, I wouldn't recommend turning off this option, unless you're doing it for very specific workloads. Because if you only have 4 or 6 cores available to you, your multi-threaded performance on your system will be incredibly weak, and you'll more than likely run into a lot of stuttering if you're running more than one program whilst playing a game or using a high-end application. So to turn off SMT or hyperthreading, there are a few ways you can do this, including ways which are accessible right now on the desktop. First of all, you could use Windows Task Manager by pressing Control, Shift and Escape on your keyboard, heading over to Processes, finding the process you wish to turn SMT or hyperthreading off for, right-clicking on the process, selecting Go to Details, finding the application with inside of here, right clicking, navigating down to set CPU affinity, and you can start disabling every other CPU core with inside of this list. So for me, it'll be CPU 1, 3, 5, 7, and you can do it that way. But the annoying thing about using Task Manager is that this resets every single time you close the application and close your PC. So it's not a viable way of doing it. For the second option to do this through software, you can use a program called Process Lasso, which I've recently done a video on on the channel, diving much deeper in how to use this program for the best performance results possible. If you wish to use Process Lasso, simply download and install the utility, head down to your process list, find the application you wish to turn SMT off on for, right click on this, navigate down to CPU Affinity, always. Here you'll have all of the options available, including disable SMT or disable hyperthreading. To turn this off, just simply click the button for hyperthreading or SMT, head back inside of the game you just turned this off on, and take a look at the performance of the game. Now that will get you a fair bit of the way there, but it's not the same as properly turning off SMT or hyperthreading at the system level. You're just stopping a specific application from accessing those cores, even though those cores are still active on the PC. You will see a performance improvement from doing that, but it's not the way I would recommend doing it if you want the best performance results possible. If you want to properly disable SMT or hyperthreading on your system, the best and most recommended way to do this to ensure that you get the low latency improvements is to disable this in the system BIOS. It's very quick, simple, easy and safe to do and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Regardless of the age, make or model of your system, to enter the system BIOS you'll first of all need to navigate down to your Windows Start button, right click on the power option and select Restart. When the system is restarting you'll then need to spam Delete on your keyboard whilst the system is restarting. If this doesn't boot you into the system BIOS, repeat the step, but this time try F9, and if that doesn't work, try F2. 
Now, depending on the age, make, model, or even manufacturer of the motherboard in which you're using on your system, your BIOS screen could look slightly different. For the most part, you're more than likely going to be booted into the basic BIOS settings. To access any advanced modes, which will make this a lot easier, press F2 on your keyboard. The BIOS in which I'm in right now belongs to my Intel 12th generation system, but most system BIOSes should look somewhat similar to this if you're running on anything up to about eight years old. At this point, we need to go through some of the main options at the top of our system until we find something regarding CPU settings or advanced DPU settings. On this system, it's found under this tab. We then have the option for hyperthreading with inside of here because this is an Intel system, but for an AMD Radeon system, this will be marked as SMT. On some fancier BIOSes, you may have a search option available, and if you do have this, go to the top right or top left, wherever that search option is, Select it. In the search bar, if you're on an Intel system, search for Hyper. If you're on an AMD Radeon system, search for SMT, select Enter, and that should bring you directly to the setting. On this system, I'm going to be turning off Hyper Threading, so I'm going to double click where it says Auto, then head down and set this to Disabled. If I decide I want to re-enable this on my system, you'll just boot back into the BIOS, change the setting back to either Auto or Enabled, and save that setting. Assuming we're going to be turning this off, with it disabled, I'm then going to go to the top right, select Save and Exit, Save and Exit Setup, and select Yes. This will then reboot the system. In some cases, this could reboot a few times because we've changed something about the system. So it may need a couple of restarts to make sure that everything is saved and good to go. Booting into one of my older Intel systems, running an i7-4770K, which is nearly seven years old, although I wouldn't recommend turning off hyperthreading on this system, you can still do so. Here we have the BIOS for this system, and we can quickly and easily access the setting by navigating down to Advanced CPU Core Settings, scrolling down, where we then have the option for Hyperthreading Technology. It's currently set to Auto. If we set this to Disabled, save and exit out of the BIOS. At this point, once you've turned off SMT or Hyperthreading on your system, head back into your Windows desktop, then hit Control shift escape on your keyboard to open up Task Manager, head over to the Performance tab, hit CPU, on the bottom right hand side you should now see that your cores and logical processors should match. That's a clear indication that hyperthreading or SMT has now been turned off in your system and you're now good to go and boot into some of your favourite games or high performance applications, test them out and see what performance benefits there are. Remember if you wish to disable this option at any time, you would just do the reverse of those settings. So boot back into your BIOS, turn SMT or hyperthreading back on, save and restart. This now leads us on to the benchmark section of this video. On the left hand side you can see SMT or hyperthreading enabled, which is our stock setting, and on the right hand side we have SMT or hyperthreading turned off on the respective system. You can see before and after FPS. Whilst running through the benchmarks, it's also worth noting that there are a few more options available to you if you decide to run with SMT or hyperthreading off. In some cases, the temperature and or the amount of watts being drawn from the CPU is lower on the system not using SMT or hyperthreading, freeing up some of the resources available on the CPU. This is fantastic for those of you that want the energy savings, but for those of you like me, this can actually open up room for further overclocking headroom on your CPU. For instance, on my 5900X system, I'm not able to go above 4.65 GHz all core with SMT on. But when I turn SMT off, I get performance improvements, latency improvements, and I'm also able to overclock the CPU further up to 4.725 GHz on all cores, providing even further FPS increases with the extra headroom I was able to free up. So not only like for like is it better performing, you also have further headroom available to you to push your CPU even further if you're into overclocking and tuning. This can also work on laptops, but laptop compatibility can be quite hit or miss, and depending whether or not you have the option available to change it in the BIOS, may also depend on your manufacturer. If you are looking to apply this on a laptop, my personal recommendation would be to use Process Lasso, as mentioned earlier on in the video, to control SMT or hyperthreading via software. Even though this isn't as good, you'll still see some great benefits from not using these cores, and it's a much easier and safer way to do it on laptops, because you may not have the options available with inside of the BIOS, or you may have to look into workarounds to get access to them. And there you guys have it. Let me know of your performance results on your system, whether or not you're going to be keeping this on, off, or if you're going to be using it for select programs, and your system specs. As always, if you have enjoyed this video and like to get the most out of your system, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.